Hi guys, Clay at Full Tilt again. Thanks for the great response on the other videos. We appreciate it. We're going to install one of our new products on a 62 to 67 Nova rear subframe. And uh, there it is. We're going to get to it and get her installed. Okay, just a couple things that our kit has that other kits don't. If you look at these right here, these are extra subframe connectors which will add a bunch of strength. This is our drive shaft loop that we built. These are adjustable, so if the width is a little different here or there, you can slide them in, weld them, bolt them, whatever you like to do. FYI, the rear end housing axles does not come with a kit, but it is an option we can supply all welded together, ready to drop into your car. Okay guys, we're going to get her fired up here. First thing, obviously, is to pull the old suspension out. This right here and this on the other side are the old spring pockets where the leaf springs come out at. This is part of this internal structure on this car. This is where the drive shaft loop will bolt up to. We'll show you that in just a few. So get it out. These lips right here, this, this thing has a lip all the way around it. We've already done it so we don't have to waste your time. Grind that lip off on both sides so your pocket will slide over real nice like. Might have to oblong that hole out a little bit. There again, we'll show you in just a few minutes. Another thing is right up here, this is where the shock mount will go. You might want to clean it off in there a little bit. We didn't do a great job because we're just going to mock this up to show you guys what to do, but you need to clean this whole area because either if you weld it or bolt it, you'll want it nice and clean. Okay, a little quick thing about our drive shaft loop. One side of this is longer than the other side is. The long side goes on the driver's side. This, when it's all together, you can either bolt or you can weld. Totally up to you. I would weld it if, if it were me. So we're going to put this together and show you how it goes in the car. Take this here. Light it in. Other side. Slide it in. I'll get my buddy Ron here to come help me. And we'll show you how it fits up in the car. Okay. You'll see why these slide. The reason these are trimmed off is so that it'll fit in the spring pocket. What you want to do, you want to kind of come up from the bottom and then just pull up in there. Take your bolt. We've already drilled these bolt holes in here just to save some time so we don't have to do it again. You will have to drill those bolt holes. Put the bolt in, the head side. The head needs to go in here because there's a spacer that goes in here a little later on and it'll get in the way. So put the head in there. Put it in there like that. Get it up. Got yours? Yep. What you want to do is you want to take this thing and shove it up against the floor. There you go. So you can either do it now or you can do it later. Make sure this is centered, which this one's pretty well centered. That's why these are adjustable. So you can make sure that your hoop is centered in the car. Now you can either take your drill, you can drill these three holes and you can put the bolts that we supply in there or you can take a welder and you can weld it all the way around weld those holes shut we're going to after this is all said and done we're going to weld it all i'll just give you that option okay next thing is we're going to put these spacers these spacers go in the leaf spring pocket to keep this from collapsing when you tighten everything down so what happens this baby goes up in there might be a little tough we got two bolts these are threaded so they'll just thread in Thread in one side, thread in the other side. Make sure you start them both before you tighten one down because they're, they, uh, they don't like one another sometimes, so. Okay, we'll tighten these, dis you can tighten these down, tighten the heck out of them. It's just uh, to keep this thing all in place. Do the other side, it's the same process, everything's fine. We'll, put in the upper shock mount start putting in some four bars okay guys we're gonna put in the upper shock mount here it is this right here is for the pan hard bar that goes on the passenger side this thing will only go one way because these are canned on both sides so they'll only go one way if you look up here you see this little body indentation whatever you want to call it right there that's where the edge of your upper shock mount goes there's one on each side 
it goes right up against that. So I'm gonna get Ron in here to help me again, and we're gonna try and set this bad boy up in here, and I'll show you a little trick. This baby is gonna fit tight, because that's the way we made it. Okay, so when you got it all the way up against the frame, and up against your body, your body indentation, it's not really an indentation, but your body piece here. What I do, got it wrong? I drilled me a couple holes right here, and I'm gonna take some self-tapping screws. And I'm gonna put them in there, just to hold that bad boy up in there. Gonna do it on both sides. Make sure you're up against the bottom of the frame when you do this so that everything's good. Because theoretically, that's where she's gonna go. And that'll hold it up in there. Just so you know, this thing can be bolted or welded, whichever one you decide. If you weld it, you wanna weld here and here. You come out here. You wanna weld up all the way across, all the way. All the way around, as much surface area as you can get. If you want to drill it and put some bolt holes in it, I don't supply the bolts because I don't like, I just don't like bolt holes holding my cross member in. So I'm going to weld the crap out of this when it's all said and done. But just a little FYI so you guys know, these brackets right here, they come with the kit, but they don't come welded on the rear end unless you buy a rear end from us, obviously. So we'll get this bad boy up in place and we'll put some four bars in there. Okay guys, so you know, the upper bar is a little bit shorter than the lower bar. Roughly 23 inches center to center on the upper one, roughly 23 and 3 eighths of an inch on the lower one. These are double adjustable bars so you can turn this, these will go in and out so you can get the right wheelbase that you guys desire. So let's get them in the car. We're going to start with the upper one. It slides in, bolt comes in from this way. There's barely enough room to get a, a nut on there, but there is. Come back here. Move this back, got that rear end for a minute. We're gonna slide this bad boy down in here. Yes, they are tight, so. If this is a little bit off, you can see we're not quite fitting in our hole. You can take this bar. You can adjust these bars in or out, whatever it takes. If you go the right way, it sure helps. Pop it in. Okay guys, this is the shock we use. It's made by Viking Performance. Best shock on the market as far as I'm concerned. They come just like this. They're double adjustable, rebound and compression. They come with stainless steel washers and a thrust bearing in between there makes this thing a whole lot easier to tighten up. This is the upper, There's a, this is for a spacer. So what you want to do is this needs to slide up in here a little bit like that. You gotta hold your mouth just right when you do this. So. There you go. Put your nut on. Obviously on all this stuff we're not putting nuts on it, you know to put nuts on it, so I'm not telling you anything you don't know. So, on the bottom here, we're going to let this down a little bit. Kit comes with, the kit comes with a big bolt. It's grade 8. What you want to do, you want to get this through stripe. 5 8 washer. 5 8 washer and the spacer. I'm going to let this down a little more. You'll be able to adjust all this when you adjust your shock to you get your right height to where you want. This is just so to show you guys what's happening. That goes in like that. Put a nut on there. That baby's there. Okay, next wait, step. No, start. Okay, the give next it two step is... Wait. <laughs> give it two seconds, then start. Fucking director. <laughs> <laughs> next step is putting the panhard bar in. Here it is. Really pretty simple. You got this side, it's over on the passenger side. This drops into there. Bolt goes in. You wanna hand me that panhard bar bracket, Ron? This is our panhard bar bracket that we have built. 
it only goes on one way. The other end of your pan heart bar slides in there. The bolt goes in and screws in. We put a nut down there so you don't have to try and get in there with a wrench. There again, I'm going to make this quick and simple so you, what you want to do, you want to throw this on your rear end. You want to take a torpedo level and you want to level that part of the bracket. Make sure you got about a half an inch clearance right here. If you don't, take this bad boy, screw it out a little bit. I, I always have enough to put my fingers in there. So you want to level it this way and you want to plumb it this way and then weld her on. That's it. <laughs> okay, there's the pan hard bar bracket obviously welded here and I actually weld it on the inside also. Weld the crap out of it because this needs to be pretty substantial. Tighten everything down. We've got the other shock in. Put all your nuts, washers. This will all come with bolts, nylocks, everything you need to put this bad boy together. And uh, basically there it is for the rear end. Okay, one last quick easy thing. You want to set your pinion angle. When this is on its wheels and your shocks are loaded and you're at ride height, you want your pinion angle to be down two or three degrees. Everybody will argue differently, so on and so forth. Works for me, that's what I do them all. So make sure you set your pinion angle when it's all said and done. We'll show you how to put the subframe connectors on and we'll be good to go. Okay, last thing. These are our subframe connectors. These two little bat wings on here are specific to our kit. Nobody else does it that I know of. I'll show you how they go. Okay, if you look up here on the body, this is the original body mount. Or not body mount, but body support, floor support. You need to notch this out right here so that your subframe connector will go around it. And there again, what I do, I slide it up there. We slide it up here. I take one of these. I take my... You can drill a hole. I don't supply the hole in the bottom. You can drill a hole. Hold it up in there. That way it doesn't fall and bash me in the head. These right here. Let's see. Got bolts. These, those. Let me grab a couple bolts here real quick. Okay. So, if we go back here. You want to drill these. There's two holes right here. You want to drill these out and put your bolts in them. Drill them out, put your bolts, put your nuts, everything on there. And I'm just going to put these together real quick just to show you how this is done so you can get the gist of it. You drill these. This is all included in the kit. Slide through there. Obviously that one's too short, but you get the drift of it. And right here also, these right here, you go in, that one goes up in. There's three bolt holes that go in here. You put these three bolts, you clamp it down, and then you got to come back here and you got to weld these on to your subframe connector. We made this uh, as easy as possible. Uh, there's there's some welding involved. There's some bolting involved. It's just what we get what we did I tried to make it simple and easy for everybody so they can do it on their back in their garage Not everybody's got a lift so put your, all your bolts in here tighten them up put them in there tighten them up Put them in here tighten them up weld it on You're good to go. If you got any questions, you know where I'm at call me 970-255-8890. Thanks for watching. This is Clay at Full Tilt